Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Josh here. I just want to talk a little bit about shapes in Excel. So shapes are a really powerful visual design tool in Excel. As you can see here, I created the seasonal foraging guide and a lot of it is based off of the shape features that Excel has built in. So I'm first just going to give you a little how to and then explain how you can stack shapes together to create cool designs and effects like the ones you see here. We're going to do this in under five minutes, so we're going to go fast. First things first, inserting a shape. It's under the insert menu at the top here. You'll see shapes with a drop down with lots of different choices. You're most likely going to be using rectangles, circles, those sorts of things the most, along with lines. So let's just drop a rectangle in and we'll get to the basics. So when you add a shape in, select the shape and you'll have the shape format menu open at the top. Uh, you'll also potentially have this side menu open. I like to use the side menu, it's what I use the most. To get that side menu, right click, go to size and properties. This menu will open up. You just have to click over to color for what we're about to show you right now. You can fill a shape with a solid fill. That means you're filling it with one color. A gradient fill, that means a gradient from one color to another. A picture or texture fill, which means, as you might imagine, a picture. And a pattern fill, which is a pattern where you can select the colors of the background and the foreground in the pattern. For solid fills, the most important thing to know is that you can control transparency. I use a lot of transparency effects in my dashboards. It kind of helps create a cohesive effect amongst all the colors on the page. It's a, it's a useful tool, but that transparency also pulls over to our next fill type, which is gradient fills. Gradients let you go from one color to another, but something very important to know about gradients is they can also be used to create shadows. So let's go from a black to a black on both of the ends of the gradient. And then on one end, let's go transparent. And as we go transparent, look at this, all of a sudden we have this cool shadow effect. If we remove the outline from our shape by turning off the line, all of a sudden there's this neat shadow. So if you play with this a little bit, you can create really cool shadow effects that really bring your dashboard to life. You can see in these little cards, you see how I have a little two sections with a lighter and darker area that is using this gradient effect gradient effect, you change your angle by selecting it here. That just changes which direction it's going, as you can see. You also have different types of effects or preset gradients. I don't ever use the preset gradients. I think they don't look great personally. And radial, rectangular, and path just change what type of gradient. Is it following the path of the shape? Is it a rectangular gradient or a radial one, meaning a circular gradient? I also don't use those very much as well. Stick with linear. If you're just getting started, it works really well. Uh, transparency is obviously transparency. Brightness, probably don't touch that, but it affects the brightness of whatever you have in there. And I find it to just kind of be confusing. Leaving it set at zero tends to make things a little bit more straightforward to use. We also have a picture fill. Picture just drops a picture in there. This is a Morel mushroom. You can see it here. So I, all of these fills are just rounded rectangles with a picture fill in them. And then pattern fill, as I mentioned before, it lets you select a pattern, and then you can select the colors for the foreground and background of that pattern. Uh, we also have lines. Lines are really important to understand, so let's turn off our fill, turn on our line. You can have both or uh, either one. We're going to make it a little bigger so you can see it. Uh, let's go to five points. So obviously we can set transparency as we've talked about before. You can set sketched angle. This just makes it look like it's hand-drawn or not. Um, you can do compound type. I don't use this, but if you want to do a double line, you have that ability. And then dash type. I do use this. I find that dashes can sometimes be a useful uh, visual tool uh, when working on these sorts of things. Um, those dash types, you have a few different options. One other thing to show you with lines. So we can't do it with a rectangle, but if we, if we insert a line instead of a rectangle, let me drop that in there. We'll select it just like we did before, but this time, let me make this five points so it's a little thicker. You're, you have the ability to add an arrow end to it. So you see here, all of a sudden now we have an arrow at the end. So end arrow type, end arrow size just lets you add an, an arrow at the end. You can also do it at the beginning. And those arrows, you're not limited to arrows. You can also do different shapes like a circle, rectangle, etc. Those are the core features. We also, I just want to show you, can layer all of our shapes together, and that's how you create cool, complex things like this card layout. I talk a little bit more about this in some of my guides. I send out free templates, including the one you're seeing right here in my newsletter below. If you join that newsletter, I'll send these out to you, and then you can pull them apart yourself, and it's a really great way to learn how to do some of these things and figure out some of these effects.